Hey, it's Gossam with Solutions 8, and in this video, I want to show you the easy way to manage your Google search campaign. Now, here's the thing. Um, Google Ads is, is a robust beast, and it takes a whole lot more than what I'm about to show you to manage a, cam a campaign from end to end. The purpose of this video is to show you, you know, kind of the simple way to manage a campaign if you just need to do the minimum. So, you know, let's say that your ad manager, you know, for whatever reason is, isn't available, or you're in between resources, or you just want to check in on, you know, see if people are doing their job. Uh, so this isn't like the uh, ultimate guide, all inclusive, everything you'd ever need to check to manage your campaign. This is just the, the quick and dirty, if you need to get the job done, you know, good enough for now, let's say. So that preface aside, let's dig into it. First, the way to think about Google Ads, this is my Google Ads flywheel. And Google Ads is run uh, based off of this system here. You make assumptions, you test those assumptions, that's the learning phase. You observe your test. This is a step that we often skip. People will start running campaigns and then a day later make changes. The observation phase requires spend. So you have to actually spend into your observations. And then you optimize. You make changes. You adjust according to what you're seeing and, and, and how you think it can be improved. And then you go and you make more assumptions. So it's really important to remember that you're, you're basing your campaign off of guesses. Um, and there's no way for you to know because you haven't done this before. So that's okay as long as they're educated guesses and then you're following this you know, pseudo scientific method in order to optimize those guesses. So let's dive into the way that the management looks here in the flywheel, which you know, I mean, sort of kind of uh, encompasses all of these. Um, so the very first thing you do is, is you wanna monitor your cost per click thresholds. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, inside of the, the campaign, we're gonna go, I've got a dummy campaign deployed. Uh, we'll look at uh, inside of keywords, we'll customize our columns and then assign these three attributes. First page bid, top of page bid, first position. So inside of a campaign, gonna go to keywords, uh, columns, modify columns, attributes, and then I want first page bid, top of page bid, first position. Notice the order I went in. That's also the order that it adds it. Um, and that's just the order that I like to see things. So I'm not going to see any data here because I haven't actually spent into this ecosystem, but you want to probably start off with manual CPC. Don't necessarily enable enhanced CPC just yet. Um, but what you'll start to do is if you spend into um, this campaign, Google will tell you what your estimated first page bid. So this is just the amount of money you have to, sp to, to spend to get land on the first page, which by the way, the bottom of the first page generally receives very little in the way of clicks. So this is should be a low threshold. Here's your estimated top of page bid. So how much do you have to spend to be in the, the four pack? And then here's your estimated first position bid. How much do you have to spend to be number one? And when you begin to see these numbers, you can either A, adjust in order to um, align yourself with those bids, or B, start to take a good hard look at uh, whether or not that cost is even worth it for you, given you know your click-through rate, conversion rate, closing rate, et cetera. So um, this is a viability study. Not all keywords are going to be worth it long-term. I'd caution you against turning keywords off right out of the gate because you can always optimize those costs down, especially if you can improve your, your quality score. Um, but this is where to go to start to determine how much things are going to cost. Let's go over to our next one. Um, once you've figured out your CPC thresholds, uh, now we want to check our search term reports. Um, search term report is when you're inside of keywords, you're just going to go to search terms. Uh, I don't have any search terms because this campaign is a dummy campaign, but this is going to show you what people actually searched for and the keyword that I'm bidding on that triggered that search. Depending on the match type that you're using, you could have really big swings. They're, they can be relatively disparate. So you want to be careful about using broad match. I like to start with broad match modified because that gives me the opportunity to sort of expand my horizons a little bit and see what people are searching according to what Google thinks is analogous to what I'm bidding on. And then as I find keywords that I really like, I'll uh, take those and, and turn them into um, phrase and exact match. At the same time, I'm adding negative keywords for anything that I don't necessarily want to show up for. So, you know, mild things like jobs, careers, you might add negative keywords like how to, um, anything that isn't going to articulate commercial intent. So you're constantly checking your search terms to make sure that they're relevant. Um, or excuse me, I'm in your search keywords. You're constantly checking your search terms to make sure that they're relevant. Uh, you want to add negative search terms. This sometimes gives you expanded opportunities. Maybe you're going to create a whole new ad group after you find out that, you know, wow, a lot of people are searching for me in a comparison context. They're saying, you know, like my business versus this other business, that could be its own ad group or even its own campaign. So make sure you're constantly checking your search terms and you can increase and decrease bids according to search terms as well. Um, Next is check your ads. Of course, you need to check your ads. Uh, you already know how to do that, I imagine. But um, when you're inside of uh, your campaign, you can see the ads, ads extensions here. Um, and you're going to want to check your ads and build new ads as your split test yields a winner. You don't want to just default to the winner and then leave it there. You want to make sure that you're constantly allowing Google to create new split tests. Google wants to um, 
test against three ads. So it's not an A-B test, it's a split test. And it's typically testing against two expanded text ads and one responsive ad. Uh, generally, sadly, <laughs> For me, uh, the, the responsive ad wins, which means that the computer beats the human more often than not. Um, so make sure you're always creating new ads so that you're always having the opportunity to, to test what's winning. Um, and then carry successful ads over to analogous ad groups. If you see something that's working really well in ad group A, maybe you know take that over to ad group B if it applies. A uh, couple notes on bidding strategies. I'm not gonna go through these in, in uh, extreme detail um, because we have videos on this, but make sure that you're adjusting your bidding strategy according to what's best for your campaign. I like to start with manual CPC, but you know if I've got 20 leads already and I like where I'm going, I might move to target CPA. Um, Google's always gonna want you to move into maximize conversions. I think that tends to be a catastrophic idea, but there are reasons to use it um, effectively. Uh, maximize conversion value, if you're using uh, conversion values, if you have those applied, uh, maximize impression share if you just want to be shown every single opportunity. This is typically if you have a really solid uh, keyword canvassing and sculpting. Maximize clips. Um, this is quantity over quality. We, we just want as many clicks as we can possibly get and we kind of have a low budget. Let's briefly talk about exit strategy. Not all campaigns succeed. And that doesn't necessarily mean that Google ads failed. Sometimes that can mean, and forgive me for saying this, but sometimes that can mean that your business model isn't working. You have a competitor who can afford to pay more for a customer than you can. Maybe they've got an ascension that you don't have. So, you know, you're selling this as a core product. They're selling this as a loss leader so they can sell other things on the back end. Um, we see that a lot in, um, you know, places like um, uh, naturopathic wellness. Um, you know, there are doctors that are giving away treatments that other doctors are trying to, you know, that's their bread and butter. Um, so you just need to kind of understand when an industry is saturated. Um, and your threshold for pain is going to be the indicator as to when you call it quits. But what you want out of Google is preferably within about 90 days, you need to know what your golden ratio is. I put in a dollar and I get $3 out or $5 out or $10 out. Um, if you're at least one to one, that's a good sign. But if you're not one to one, if you're not break even at the end of 90 days, it might be time to pull, pull the plug unless your campaign is just a train wreck. Make sure that you have a well-constructed campaign and hopefully you're working with a professional. Um, realize that there are industries out there where um, they're running the Walmart model. Um, plumbing is like this. You get these great big behemoth plumbing companies that'll come into a new city and they'll spend more per click than the job is worth just to, you know, shove all the little guys out. Uh, and then once all the little plumbing companies are either out of business or not advertising on Google, now all of a sudden you see that their prices start to go up. Um, check your auction insights. Look at how many people are competing. We ran ads for a roofer in Plano, Texas, and in this little 20 mile radius, there must have been close to 30 competitors. It was insane. Um, and we're not going to get that data until after we run. So if you open up your auction insights and you can just see, you know, an inordinate amount of competition, then you might, you know, I'm not telling you to quit your business, obviously, but find other pockets, other avenues, other, you know, maybe uh, tangential services or other geographies. Um, and keep an eye out for inflated CPCs. Not every click is worth what you pay. Uh, I would caution low margin businesses. This is, you know, like drop shippers have a really tough time with Google ads. Um, it can work, but there's not enough margin for you to be able to make mistakes. So um, you need to have some meat on the bones in order to, you know, be really profitable. I hope that helps. Like I said, it's the quick and dirty, um, but this is what I think business owners need to know in order to, to you know, manage the campaigns themselves. There's obviously a whole lot more to managing Google ads, but if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, and if you comment, I'll respond to it personally. Otherwise, I'll be shooting video every single day. So I hope I uh, see you tomorrow.